next video shows how to configure Lidorama S3 Advanced for the Pixlite controllers. Now this video shows a Pixlite 16, but it also works with other Pixlite controllers such as the Pixlite 4. Now let's start off by going over the configuration of this controller. Now what we physically have set up here is we have three outputs. Now they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9 through 16 on the back side. We only have one side powered up and this is just one pixel. This is just for demonstration. Of course, normally you might have 50, 100, however many con pixels you have configured on each output. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and go into the configuration utility using the lights assistant. I've done a search and you can see this particular controller is showing up as a 192.168.1.55, which in this particular case has been DHCP assigned. And if you've seen our other videos, we recommend setting it statically so that you have a known IP address for this controller. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and just double click on it and look at the settings. <clears throat> now, this controller is set up with one node per string or one pixel per string. It's also set up with a starting universe of one with a start channel of one. So this means that this is DMX start channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means that this is the first universe, universe one, DMX channel one, and we have one node per string. So if we look at the advanced by checking off advanced and clicking in here, you'll see that it's already done that for us. It's already set up start channel one, two, three, and it skipped the next string if it were. Now, of course, we don't have a string. We only have one node each. The next string is four, five, six for the channel. And then the third string is seven, eight, nine. You can see that again, I have one node per string. And because I don't exceed the number of universes required, which is 512 channels of DMX per universe, it's let me put all of those channels as one universe. So again, universe one across the whole controller, DMX channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's go ahead and get started. Now, we're going to go ahead and launch Lidorama Sequence Editor. Now, keep in mind that you also must be running in the system tray down here in the bottom, the hardware control panel. So what you want to do is go to control pan or go to uh, Lidorama and make sure that your control panel application is working. Now, you might get an error here. This is here showing that it is now running in your system tray. This takes the data from Lidorama, converts it, and outputs it to E131. If you do not see the little bulb in the bottom system tray, and it's not blue, something's probably not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and light up Lidorama here. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a new sequence. I'm going to sec select new musical sequence. I'm just going to go ahead and take the defaults. I'm going to bring in my audio file. We're going to close out the tapper because we're not going to put in any particular uh, uh, timings here. And we're going to go ahead and first go under Edit, Preferences, Network Preferences. Now, this has already been configured for uh, this particular controller. Uh, now, if you have any LOR controllers, they will appear in here. Your DMX controllers will appear here. Now, we have one universe here. Now, you may need to set up multiple universes. So let's say that we had one side as universe one, one side as universe two, because that's the number of pixels we had in the basic setup that we did. We would need to set up two universes with the same adapter IP address, but with the same protocol. So let me go ahead and just show you what we've got here. So when I double click on universe one, you can see that it is not use adapter. Now adapter would be something like if you had a uh, Intec Pro or USB based dongle. We're not using a USB based dongle. We're using E131, which is DMX over TCP IP, which is over ethernet, which is right here. Now we can use multicast. Multicast allows the data to be sent to all controllers on the entire network, but you may not want that because of network bandwidth issues. You may have multiple controllers. 
you may just want to go ahead and specify which specific controller you wish to draw to broadcast your data to. Now, it says specify, but what that really means is, in parlance, is unicast, or one particular controller. It's not sending the data out to all controllers and letting them listen, and then they determine. So we're going to say specify. We're going to put in the IP address of our controller. And just as a quick test, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring up the command prompt and just double check to make sure our controller is there. And remember, it's 1.55, and you can see that that is set up correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and unplug that so you can't get a signal. And as you can see, it's not working. I plug it back in, and then I get a signal. So we know that we've got the right IP address. We're talking the right controller here. Now, this is the port that will be used by the controller to receive the data. You are going to see this DMX listener port down here. And that is different, and that has to do with the little utility in the control panel that, that LOR uses to convert the data. So this normally is 5568. And if you've used our test utilities like DAE131, you probably know that that's correct. Now, that brings up another good point right now. Before you configure with an LOR, or if you decide to go ahead and configure with LOR to start with, and you have problems, back up one step. Go ahead, watch our videos that show you how to use x lights or DAE-131. Those are both test tools, and they take out the complexity of configuration in LOR. You have to get a lot of things right in LOR to make sure E-131 works. And it's a lot easier to go ahead and use the test utility. It gives you a test to determine, am I really configuring LOR right? Is the controller working correctly? Are the pixels set up? So there's a lot of possibilities there. It gives you another test possibility. So we've gone ahead and configured it. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, normally, if I were configuring this for the first time, it would give me a warning. And it would say that I needed to close down and restart uh, LiDARAMA Sequence Editor. Now, I've already configured that, so I won't know, need to do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, insert a timing right here. And we'll just go over here, insert a timing. And that just gives me some places to turn on and off things. I'm just going to do some real simple things here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do after I've set up my timings, I'm going to go ahead and go to channel configuration. Because we have to actually put in the con channels or the controllers that we're going to be using. Now, the output simply says how LOR should output data. It doesn't tell it to what controllers and on what channels. So we're going to go in here to channel configuration. Now, if you are using Superstar Lights that may differ, check LOR's website for information on how to properly configure Superstar Lights. So we're going to go to Channel Configuration. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these LOR controllers. This is just the default LOR controllers that exist. And I'm going to go ahead and say Add Controller. We're going to say DMX Universe. Now, it doesn't know a particular controller, but it just knows the DMX Universe. And because, again, we set this whole controller up as DMX Universe 1, we have 1. Now, LOR is stuck in the world if it's got to always have 16 multiple channels. So you can set it up as individual channels. You can set it up as the full number of channels. However you choose, um, you may need to set it as close to the number of channels. So if you have 128, great, your luck. If you have 136 channels, select 144 and then delete the 144 back to 136. So, in our case, we only have nine channels. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, we're going to go ahead and just select 16 channels to keep it simple. You can see that it's added. I'm going to go ahead and delete this last LOR channel. And LOR is still stuck in the world of this naming strategy of, of circuits because old LOR controllers have the LOR protocol with the circuit mentality, as in circuits of output. But really what this is referring to is DMX channels. So this is actually universe one, DMX channel one, DMX channel two, DMX channel three. So these all comprise the first pixel, one, two, three. So we could actually put in DMX1, DMX2, DMX3. Now, when it's displayed, you're going to see individual channels, and that's not what you want. 
Now we have other videos on our website that show how to convert sequences over to uh, RGB and there are many other videos from LOR that show you how to manage RGB channels because what we are dealing with here is RGB. But for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and just list them as individual channels. Again, this is not normally what you would do with a pixel controller. You're of course going to be using RGB and RGB channels and you would want to convert or set them up in RGB. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, so what we have here is we have DMX channels 1, 2, 3. So for real simple tests, we're just going to turn on red, green, blue. And we're going to go ahead and go up here. I'm going to go ahead and just double check to make sure my Lidorama. Uh, I'm going to unload that and start it back up again here. It looks like there was something wrong with it. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go ahead and run. You can't see this necessarily. I'm going to go ahead and run the control panel. It says it's running. And I'm going to go up here to play. I'm going to select control lights. And with any luck here, we're going to get it to play. And there you go. So you can see that red, green, blue is selected. So we're going to go ahead and, I'm, again, make sure you have control lights turned on. I'm going to start the sequence red, green, blue. Now, so let's expand that out. So let's make the next channel. So now remember, this is six, I mean, four, five, six. So let's go ahead and turn that one on as white. So this is the third pixel. We're going to turn that one on as white. And then we're going to come over here and make this one white. That's the third pixel. Remember, each one of these makes up a pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. White. White. So again, let's go ahead and start this. So you're going to start off with red. Then in the second timing, we're going to end up with white on this one. I'm sorry, this one's going to end up with uh, red on this one at the same time this one's white. And there's white on the second one. And that is how easy it is to set up LOR S3 Advanced with the E131 protocol using a PixLite controller. Again, see some of our other videos or Lidorama's videos for setting up and controlling and programming in RGB channels. This video just talks about how to configure the hardware output in simple channel configuration.